Good evening. Now, is the microphone too loud in here? It's a little loud. It is a little loud. Can you turn that down some, Steph? We, you know, this technology stuff, you get everything set, and I feel like it is at home. You tell the kids, don't touch it. Just just leave it alone. That, that's better. And, and, and then you go to do that thing that you set up perfectly, and it's all out of whack. And you're like, kids, don't touch it. Right? Stop it. So, but uh, it is what it is. Well, uh, welcome to our Wednesday evening worship services. A uh, couple of notes. Um, Lori Quinn is home, um, sick. She, she got, it's, I, I don't want to say it's not COVID because it's, it's, it's another thing. But she actually went and got tested today. And uh, she'll be out of the office probably for the rest of this week. And we're hoping that she comes back early. And, and Mr. Bickle was back for about two minutes today. His, did his flight get delayed last night, or they had to? They missed it. They missed a connection. They missed a connecting flight. Had to stay in a hotel. Didn't get their bag. So he, you know, he kind of wandered in a little <laughs> bit, and, and we're like, "Oh, you go home and get some rest." And I think he's here tomorrow for a bit, and then he, and then he's off hunting. Um, he, he has seniority here, so he gets first week of hunting season. That, that's just the way we've done it. Um, and, you know, other things going on, uh, you, you know, that, that the, the, the COVID spike in Saginaw County is very real. Um, the hospitals have closed once again to all visitors. And in fact, they're sending people out of the hospital if they're not um, a serious case. Because uh, I've talked to two people who had something happen where they had to go to the hospital and probably under normal conditions they would have been admitted but in this case, they sent them home and they said, you don't want to be here. <laughs> so, so we're telling people, don't do anything that's going to put you in the hospital, right? Uh, 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 be safe. And uh, uh, our, our message for today comes from uh, the book of First Thessalonians. And, uh, you know, as, and, as always is in the church season, the, the way we work is because we're, we're slowly approaching the season of Advent in two weeks. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be in the season of Advent, which is the season awaiting the coming of Christ. So it's at this time, and the church has done this for, for uh, centuries, we focus on and not just the coming of the Christ child in the manger, but the coming, uh, Jesus coming to judge the heavens and the earth on the day of the Lord. And that's, that's the message Paul has for the, for the Thessalonians and for us this evening. So with that being said... Uh, We'll do our opening hymn, Hymn 508.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we see the day approaching. Help us to be ready, not asleep, sober, and watchful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is taken from the minor prophet Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traders are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be 
Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm uh, for this evening is a portion of Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you please stand for the gospel, which for tonight is the parable of the talents taken from Matthew 25. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, 
You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will, will more be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. In 1 Thessalonians, and, and you can follow along on your handout as well, or, or just listen, whatever you choose. St. Paul writes, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. 
I'm sorry, my, my microphone just went out and I didn't do anything. I was just standing here, but I'm going to keep going. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Try turning the master up like three quarters and then turning it back. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. Okay. Uh, verse 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. I'm curious. See if there's anything on the... Sorry, we're having Sorry. audio problems. I'm just gonna get you more so while we continue, how's everything going with everyone? Yeah? Well, we'll get other batteries. You know, okay. So how was the weather today? I was inside most of the day. Went pretty windy, right? It's, no, it's not on the live. It's, it's, it's like it cut out. We need to get more batteries. No, there. these batteries are 100%. It's not, it's not it's on this. Okay. It's not this. Check that micro, that handheld. Well, this mic, yeah. I, mean, I would need your batteries, but. <laughs> Are you have batteries in the remote? Who's on? He's just not on in here. Okay, okay. well, you know what? Then that's because you can all hear me fine. Yeah, right? yeah. Now we're good. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just pretend like we can hear each other, right? <laughs> Well, this, this, uh, the whole book of Thessalonians is, is very interesting. It, it's unique in that, you know, Paul, Thessal, Thessalonica was one of the first cities Paul traveled to. And he was only there, we read in the book of Acts, for three Sabbaths. So he was only there for like three weeks. But yet he, he had made an important inroads there and formed the church. And, and what happened was that there was a, a mob, a Thessalonian mob, and see if this rings any bells to things going on today. He would get up and preach, and they would just gather and yell over him so no one could hear what he was saying. Uh, I notice that happening in our culture a lot today. Uh, I don't like what you're saying, so I'm just going to scream at the top of my lungs, la, 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 so that nobody can hear you. Well, so they run Paul out of town. He leaves Thessalonica. He goes to Berea, and the mob follows him there and yells him down there, and then he heads off to Athens and... Thankfully, they don't pursue him any longer. But the Thessalonian church was strong in faith. Um, they had a lot going for them. They had issues like any church does. And for them, one of their issues, one of their main issues was their understanding of the day of the Lord. Now, we read about the day of the Lord a little bit in our, in our first reading from Zephaniah. You know, the day of the Lord was sort of an Old Testament uh, idea that that was the day that God would come and finally establish his kingdom. Of course, in the New Testament, the day of the Lord becomes the day Jesus returns. So the Thessalonians truly believed that Jesus was going to return to the earth as he promised, but what was happening was they thought they were all going to be alive when it happened. Some of their brothers and sisters in Christ were dying, and they were wondering, well, our theology doesn't cover those who have died. What happens? And, and what Paul writes before our reading today in 1 Thessalonians 4 is this. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. So the Greek word here for sleeping means death. That don't worry, those who have died, those who have died are in Christ. So whether you're alive in Christ or dead in Christ, you're in Christ. And so in our reading for this evening, he's going to give them a little more information on that day, the day of the Lord. And I'll tell you, if there's a subject in Christian theology that's written more about than sort of end times theology, I, I don't know what it is. Um, books and books and books. The most famous is the Left Behind series, but that's certainly not the only series that talks about the, the end of the world and the end times and, and what's going to happen. And when, whenever I, and it's called eschatology is the, the theology. The eschaton is Latin for the end, eschatology. You know, I always think Jesus himself, if you remember, 
At the end of the, the Gospel of Luke and the beginning of the book of Acts, the ascension story is repeated. So Luke, we know, wrote both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And, and if you remember the ascension story, right, the disciples are gathered, Jesus is about to ascend, he gives them his last words, I am with you always to the end of the age. He ascends up into heaven, and, and you can kind of, as you're reading, just see the disciples looking up and going, wow. Kind of like, in the, remember in the old days when someone flew, and, and you could actually go with them right up until the boarding area, right? And, and you know, the, the plane would go away, and, and you see this in movies still, and the person just stands in the window watching the plane fly away. And then they just stand there, and, and it's almost like they don't know what to do. You know, my, my loved one is going. Well, that's kind of the disciples. They're staring up in heaven, and then two angels say to them, stop staring up into the sky. You've got work to do. And in a sense, they're saying, stop worrying about when he's going to come back. He's going to come back just like he said he was. You're not going to know when, so get back to work. In the church in Thessalonica, they were so convinced Jesus was going to come back in their lifetime, a lot of them stopped working. And I, although that appeals to me, the idea of not working, right, and just sitting around all day, um, you know, they, they weren't doing, they, they stopped working. They said, well, now think about it. If you knew, okay, what is today, Wednesday? If you knew Jesus was going to return to the earth to judge the living and the dead on Tuesday, would you go to work on Monday? I don't know that I would. I, I can't say I would, right? Um, and, and, and we're playing a little loose with the scripture because, of course, we don't know the day. But they were so convinced he was coming back in their lifetime, so they a lot of them stopped working and they just sat around and prayed all day. And, and Paul has to sort of change this mindset. Um, and so he writes in the first verse concerning the times and seasons um, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You never know when a thief comes. It, it, it's unexpected. You can plan for it, but you can never anticipate it. And in verse 3, Paul says, while people are saying peace and security, sudden destruction will come upon them. And, and it's interesting because this, this reminds me of the parable of the rich fool that Jesus teaches about in Luke chapter 12. And if you remember the parable, it, it starts off, Jesus writes that there was a rich man and his land was so plentiful, he thought to himself, oh my goodness, I have a problem. I have too much stuff. I have too many crops. What a terrible problem I have. But I know what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build bigger ones. And that way I'll be able to store everything. And then, and I will say to my soul, now listen, so the guy, is, the guy says, my biggest problem in life is I have too much stuff. So I'm going to tear down my buildings, build bigger ones. I can store all my stuff. And then I'm going to say to my soul, so the, man, you know, the soul is sort of the center of our being, right? He's not going to say I'm going to console my heart or I'm going to appeal to logic. It's sort of our being. So in a sense, he's saying once I do that, my whole being will be at peace and I'll be completely secure. And he says, I'll say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? They won't be yours. You've spent all your life trying to find peace and security in the things of this world. You've forgotten about eternity. And that is, in a sense, what Paul is getting at. That people are going to say peace and security. Well, the people who have all of their peace and security in this world. And the day of the Lord will be like complete destruction. And then he continues, But you are not in darkness, brothers, for the day to surprise you like a thief. It will still come like a thief in the night, but it won't surprise us like it will the rest of the world. Why? Because we're anticipating it. We're getting ourselves ready. And then he's going to use these interesting contrasts. You are children of the light as opposed to children of darkness. You are children of the day as opposed to children of the night. 
you are those who, and then he says, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. So we are children of soberness, not sleepiness. Now here, very specifically, the Greek word used is, is sleeping as in I'm, I'm going to bed at night. That we're not walking around sort of in a daze, unaware. Jesus, one of his harshest criticisms against the Pharisees in, in Matthew 12 is that they, they, they could tell the weather. And, and it, it reminds me of today, and I'll tell you, and I notice this especially with guys. Um, you know, I talk to people for a living. That's part of what I do. And, and one of the things I try to do is, is sometimes I have to talk to people who don't really want to talk or, or maybe aren't really good at it. And so I've noticed this especially with guys. When I can't get a guy to talk much, we just start talking about the weather. Bam. Or hunting, right? And, and, and they'll talk and talk, but then I'll say, well, how are you feeling? And zip, right? You got to know the right things to talk about. He said to the Pharisees, you, you can tell the weather by looking in the sky, but you can't see the season. You can't see what's happening before you. And of course, he was saying to them, the Messiah is standing right in front of you and you can't see him. You cannot discern the proper time. And then he continues, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober. And, and this, this is how we live our lives anticipating the return of Christ. The breastplate of faith and love, so faith and love covering our heart, and, and a helmet covering our head, which is the hope of salvation. The breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation. And if you're like me and you read that passage from Zephaniah, it's very dark. Um, it's very dark. As Zephaniah writes, the day of the Lord is a day of wrath. It's a day of bitterness. It's a day of clouds. It's a day of thick darkness. It's a day of trumpet blast and battle cry. Of course, in its immediate context, Zephaniah was preaching to the Israelites because the Babylonians were knocking on the door. But of course, all prophets speak on these sort of two levels directly to Israel, but there's a word for us today. Because that day of the Lord, for those not found in Christ, will be all of those things. A day of bitterness and anguish and ruin and devastation. And think about it. And the, the book of Revelation really hits it on the head. And, and this, this is what I'm going to close with. It says, when Jesus returns to the earth, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. And those who pierced his side are going to say, oh, it's true. I don't know if I can think of a thicker dread than that. And it's true. What, what, what I most hope for wasn't true is true, and that was Jesus is the Son of God. He is the way to salvation. In my whole life, I've spent my time rejecting him and rebelling against him. But then Paul ends this on, on a high note, on a word of gospel, and that is, for God has not destined you for wrath. Your, your destination is not wrath, but salvation through Christ. And so knowing that, with the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet, which is the hope of salvation, we encourage one another and build one another up. And then he adds at the very end of this reading, just as you are doing. So he's commending them for what they're doing and telling them to keep doing it. And, and I, I think... Uh, I had a pastor's Zoom meeting yesterday, and uh, we talked about a lot of things, and one of the things that, that um, we're noticing as pastors, and we're not the only people to notice this, I, I know you probably have too, you know, they're calling it uh, COVID depression or COVID anxiety, but, you know, given all of the things that's been going on this year, people, uh, depression and anxiety are, are rampant, and how it's, it's showing itself is a complete lack of patience with everything. And so uh, we, we spent the last part of our meeting praying for patience amongst the church, the brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can be patient with each other. Um, and of course, you put it in the context of because the day of the Lord could come at any moment, um, it certainly adds urgency to it. The breastplate of faith and love and the helmet, which is our hope of salvation. That is how we encourage one another. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, help us to not find our peace and security in this world. And although this world can offer a modicum of peace and security, we know that in the end it will disappoint. Those are treasures that will rust and moths will destroy. But let us, Heavenly Father, store our treasures in heaven and help us to encourage one another and to build one another up as we await the day of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd please stand. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, as the great day of the Lord draws ever near, when your Son will return to judge the living and the dead, we pray that you would grant your people to remain faithful to the end. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, though we do not know the day or the hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful leaders who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel. Lord, in your mercy. By the power of your Spirit, help us always to be good and faithful servants who are diligent stewards of all that you so graciously provide. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, this evening we uplift the veterans in our country, those men and women who have so graciously served our country. Dear Lord, we thank them for their service and ask that you would continue to protect them and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, you have given us the gift of your creation, and though this world is passing away due to sin, we pray that you would preserve it for our use until you usher in the new creation to come. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you would grant healing and relief to all who are afflicted in mind, body, or soul, especially Ron and Sandy, Haley and Donna, Dennis and Kirsten, Laura and Eugene, Natalie and Harold, Adam and Lori, and anyone we name silently or aloud before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We unite our hearts as we pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. As often as you gather and drink from this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Welcome to the table. shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The true 
true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn, uh, 338.